um, his love, uh, his uh, care over us and his provision for us. Uh, we thank him for all of that. And um, I would like to start in Psalms 40. Um, and this is talking about, um, well, it was um, King David uh, wrote this psalm. And he's talking about himself, but he's also talking about the Lord. Uh, but he says uh, in verse 7, Psalm 40, verse 7, uh, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. What, what was he saying there? Is that in the word of God, there is a description of who you are. And all we have to do is ask the Lord and he'll share with us exactly who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, the title again of this message tonight is your position in the Lord. And, and I've said something, you know, about job descriptions uh, in the, in the natural arena. Uh, we have a job description uh, about what our job entails. For instance, George knows what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, when Joy was in uh, the educational arena, uh, there was a job description. Jenny has just retired or is retired. And when you were in the workforce, you had a job description, didn't you, Jenny? Yes. Yes, you did. And in that job description, it said exactly what you were supposed to be doing, didn't it? In that job <laughs> description? Yes. Okay, that's, that's what a job description is. It describes the job. And, and so as we, in, in verse eight, it says, I did delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yea, thy law is written in my heart. And so King David was saying, you know, I desire and I delight to do your will and what you're telling me to do. Well, in the spiritual realm, it's the same way. We have a job to do for the Lord. And, uh, and so that's in, in Psalms 40. Now, if you go over to Hebrews, uh, in, in verse 7, uh, it also talks about the volume of the book. Hebrews 10, verse 7. And it says, Then said I, well, let's go to verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do the will, to do thy will, O oh God. And so this is something that we need to, to think about, that we ask the Lord to show us exactly who we are and what we're supposed to be doing in the kingdom of God. And that's what this message is all about, your position in the Lord. Now, if we turn to Colossians, uh, chapter 3, it says that we are risen with him. All right. this, is who we, this is who we are as a body of believers. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits, at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of this earth. Who praise the name of Jesus. There's a lot in those, those two verses right there. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. And so when you're dead, you're hidden. You're, the, the presence of God is, is keeping you so that you cannot be destroyed. Hallelujah. And your position in the Lord is that you are with him. Hallelujah. You're in his presence. You're, you're dead. Every one of us. Uh, we are dead to, to this world. We're dead to, to sin. We're dead 
uh, but yet we live, but it's by, we live because he's in us. Jesus Christ is in us. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Now, verse five is very important. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, such as fornication, uncleanliness, um, inordinate affection, evil, uh, covetousness, idolatry, for which things the Lord, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked some time when you lived in those things. But see, you're not there anymore. What is your position in the Lord? It's a position that you have, your, your life is hidden in Christ because you have been raised with him. Whoo, hallelujah. It says, in the which time you also walked, but now, and also lived in them, but now, but now, today, hallelujah, February the 15th, today, but now you have put off all, listen to this, this is what you put off, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, you know, and filthy communication is not just using um, bad language, uh, it is doubt it's unbelief it's speaking uh contrary to the word of god that is the filthy communication and lie not one to another seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and you have put on what the new man now i'm talking about your position in the lord hallelujah it's your position is as the new man the old man is passed away, remember? And, and you've become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And here it says, you have put on the new man. Ooh, hallelujah. And which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. What does that mean? It means that your mindset has been changed to what? what God's mindset is. What is God's mindset? Well, number one, it's life. Number two, it's healing. Number three, it's being whole. Number four means righteousness. Hallelujah. And so we, we are, that position that we have in the Lord leads us down a path of righteousness. No longer do we want to do evil things. And no longer do we want to walk in doubt and unbelief, but we want to we want to walk in his righteousness. We want to seek his kingdom first. We want to walk in faith. We want to walk in love. All of those things are, that's what, that's who God is. We want to walk in his power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so in, in uh, 1 Peter 2, 9, uh, it says that we are kings and priests unto our God. That means that, you know, in the Old Testament, they were separated. There were, uh, there were kings, there were priests, and there were those that were in charge of the, who are the Levites that were in mm -hmm. charge of, of, the temple. of the temple. So there was a separation. But in the New Testament, uh, because of Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, uh, he has made us kings and priests unto our God, a, a royal, a chosen nation, peculiar people. We're strange. We're strange when we can be, uh, when things can be going wrong in our life and we can be facing challenges and, and things that are not what they need to be, we can still have the joy of the Lord. And how is that possible? It's because that we, we're not living in this world. We're living in Christ. We're living in Christ. Remember the, the presence of God is that, is that bubble around us that keeps us hidden uh, from, from the enemy. And it keeps us 
uh, in his, um, in the place that he wants us. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about a few things about your, your position. Once you know that you are a king and a priest, um, one thing is the power that goes along with that position. Now, those of you that have worked outside the home, you know that there's really, there's two kinds of position in the natural realm. There's a personal power uh, where a person is uh, assertive and a go-getter and, and they, they sometimes are perfectionists. Uh, they want things done correctly. All of that is power in the, in, a, in the natural realm and it's called personal power. But then there's also in the, and I'm still talking about the natural realm. In the natural realm, there is positional power. Because you're a principal of a school, you have, you have that power. Because you're an office manager, you have that power. Because you are a chief engineer, you have that power. Uh, because you're a medical doctor, you have that power. So all of these, but that's in the natural realm. You've got power that's inside of you as a person. And then you have the power that goes along with your position in the school, in the hospital, in the, in the corporate world, uh, wherever you are, uh, then there is those two kinds of power. But in the kingdom, in the kingdom, and if we go to Luke 10, one of my favorite scriptures, and I use this scripture a lot, and I quote it a lot. I, I, I speak it out of my mouth, you know, especially when the enemy is coming at me with different scenarios. I use this scripture, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power. These are Jesus's words, and he's speaking to you tonight. Tonight, he is telling you, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. That's the kind of power that you have. In the kingdom, you have the power that goes along with your position as being at the right hand of Jesus Christ, raised with him. Hallelujah. To sit with him. That's where you are. And, uh, and many people, uh, they tell me all the time, well, you know, the, the, the enemy's doing this and the enemy's doing that. You know, the word of God says not to even talk about what, what the enemy's doing. Where do, what's done in darkness. What's done in darkness, don't speak of. What are we supposed to be talking about then? We're supposed to be talking about what God is doing. What is God doing in your situation? What is God doing in your family? Oh, and we have been praying for all of you. We have been praying for family members uh, to come to the Lord. We've been speaking that over you. We've been speaking prosperity and, and that the peace of God will invade every part of your life. Brother Fred and I have been praying for this whole group. We, we love you. You're important to us and you're important and valuable to the Lord. So he has put us in a position of power and of authority. Hallelujah. You know, there is, um, I think about responsibility and authority. You know, with because you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, then not only do you have authority and power to speak the word of God into your situation and it will change, but you also have a responsibility to do what? What, what is your responsibility? Number one is to, to 
to give God glory. Number two is to praise him for what he's doing. Number three is that you are, you are uh, bringing everything that the enemy is doing, you're bringing it to the light. When you praise the Lord, then you're, you're bringing in the light. You're bringing in the fire. You're bringing in the power. Hallelujah. You have that responsibility. Not only do you have authority, but you have responsibility to make sure that the kingdom of God is promoted. This is what God is doing. God is saving my family. God is delivering uh, my body from pain. Uh, three of you right now, you've had pain in your body all day long. And it's not, it's not going to stay there because I'm, I'm speaking to it right now to leave your body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, I have a position in God's kingdom and you have a position in God's kingdom. It's written in the volume of the book what, what you're supposed to be doing. Some of you are supposed to be evangelizing. Some of you have healing in your hands. Some of you uh, are to uh, prophetically speak out the word of God. Joy, that's, that's you. Hallelujah. Prophetically speak out the word of God and see it come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's important to know that we have a position in the Lord. And it's written in the book. You know, one of my positions is, is in, and, and, and God sets everyone in their position. It's what he wants them to do. And so, you know, I didn't set myself as, as one of God's prophets. I didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, I think I'll be a prophet today. No. You know, it's God that puts people in position. And I, I think about, I think about Joseph in, in the Old Testament, who was thrown in the pit, who ended up in Potiphar's house, who ended up in prison, who ended up, hallelujah, in the second chariot in charge, if you will, of all of Egypt and in to help his, his brothers and to preserve his brothers in the time of famine. All of this, God did. God put Joseph in position. Hallelujah. And he's putting you in the position that he wants for you. God knows the end, the, the beginning to the end. He's the one that brought you forth. Did you know that every child that's born is a miracle of God? And they're also a gift of God. Every child. He knows them. He knows what he wants them to do. And he will put them in position. And he put Joseph in a position of what? Authority. Hallelujah. And every believer who knows who they are in Christ Jesus will operate with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. As I think about the message and what you're bringing forth today, uh, I, I believe you're saying that God knew us before we were on the earth, and he has written about us in the word of God. And the way we find mm -hmm. out who we are and what our purpose is, uh, you, you may not know today what you'll be 10, 10 years from today <laughs> or, or what God has exactly in store for you. But the way to approach it is just on a day-by-day -day basis and say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? And he will show you your purpose for today. 
And, and if you take that approach uh, day after day and you're seeking the Lord and seeking his kingdom and you're studying the word of God by the spirit of God, then he's going to begin to reveal things to you. And there'll be certain scriptures that will become alive to you. You'll mm -hmm. read a scripture and, and it just becomes alive to you. For example, when Sherry was nine years old and the Lord saved her, he told her to, uh, this is from Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to God, every creature. To every creature. Uh, and, and so she knew from the word of God from, that it became alive. That verse became alive to her. It's still alive to her today. And, and so that's what she's saying in this message tonight. God has, has always known us and, and he's written about us in the mm -hmm. word of God. And when we diligently seek to follow him and just do it on a day by day basis. You don't have to know everything, the beginning to the ending of everything. That's God's, that's God's position. He knows from, from the very beginning, he knows to the ending. He knows all of it. But all we have to do is just walk day by day mm. and study the scriptures and see what, what he's revealing to us by his spirit. Sherry used that verse from David David said, it's written about me in, in the, the volume in the volume of the book. Or in other words, we could say, it's written about you in the Bible. And, and so when you begin to read the Bible and know that it's a living document that is addressed to you, it, it's a letter to you, then different verses will rise up and become living to you, become mm -hmm. alive to you. And, and that becomes, that shows you your purpose. And, and so it's not something you have to get concerned about or anxious about. Just live day by day and, and want to serve him. And, and when you get up in the morning, each morning, just say, Lord, I, I want to serve you this day. I, I, mm -hmm. I submit to you. You know, uh, James mm -hmm. said, submit to God, resist the, the devil, devil and he will flee from you. So each day, uh, tell the Lord that you submit to him and that you want to do his will that day and show you. And so he will show you, he will lead you. Don't be concerned about your ability to hear from him. Trust him that he's a big enough God to show you what he wants for you every day. So put your confidence not in yourself, not in your ability to hear from him, about your ability to know him, put your confidence in him, who he is, that he's a great God who can speak to you, who will lead you and guide you every day of your life. That's what the message is about today. Amen. It, it's a very Amen. simple message. It's one that we can live out day by day. What is your purpose? Well, what is your purpose each day? You have a purpose in every day and just be uh, trusting in the Lord that he will show you if you put your heart and your confidence in him that he will show you what you what he wants you to do and that's what he will do because he has written about you uh, before you were ever born it was all written here and those verses will become alive to you as you seek him amen amen thank you Freddie Another person that I think about us in the Old Testament who God put into position of authority was Esther. She had favor, not only from God, but she had favor of the king. And God put her in a position to help deliver her people from, from death. And, and as, as we, you know, as you read about Esther, uh, then, he, you know, we know that she purified herself. She, she came before uh, the Lord with fasting and with prayer and intercession. And, and God began to give her a strategy and he began to give her a plan. And some of you need a plan. Some of you need a strategy uh, for your family, for your children. Uh, for your for your spouse, uh, for your work. Um, and so I encourage you, 
like Freddie said, each day, seek the kingdom of God first. Seek him. Seek him and, and let him show you what your position is. And so we see Esther going before the king and, and he holds out his scepter to her and her people are delivered uh, from death because God put her in that position. God put Moses in his position. You know, when he faced the burning bush and, and, and God told him, you know, take off your shoes because you're on holy ground. And then God began to share with Moses what his position was, what his job description was, and that was to go and to deliver God's people out of the hand of, of the, the Egyptians, out of the taskmasters and, and the, the slavery and the bondage that they were in. And along with that positioning, God gave power. He gave power to Joseph. He gave power to Esther. He gave power uh, to Moses. He gave power to Paul. And of course, he gave power to Jesus to fulfill his, his destiny, his purpose, his position as Savior and Lord, Redeemer, Messiah. You know, and, and so all of that he gives you. He, he gives it to you. If you believe in him and you believe that you've been risen with him and that you're sitting right there with them right now, then he will pour out of his spirit upon your flesh and he will make you who you are. You know, we don't make ourselves. Freddie hasn't made himself. I haven't made myself and you haven't made yourself because you belong to the Lord. You're his workmanship. That's what it says. And you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You have a sound mind. You have Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. Remember with that authority that you have, you also have responsibility to do the right thing. You have responsibility if God has told you to prophesy you have a responsibility to prophesy if God tells you to lay hands on the sick because you have healing in your hands that's the position he's put you in then you have a responsibility to pray for the sick if God has given you special uh, gifts and talents to help people financially and he's given you that authority and he's put you in that position, then you have a responsibility to help people with their finances. And you say, well, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a preacher. I'm not behind a pulpit. You know, I just, I just don't know uh, what my position is. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest positions of all, and I can say this because I'm a mother, I'm a mother of three children, 42, 43, and 45. And that position is one of the highest positions that you can have in the kingdom of God. It's to raise up those children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and to teach them God's ways. Hallelujah. And so don't belittle the, the position you know, even though you don't think, well, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a pastor, uh, you know, I, I don't go around the world and, and minister to people, but every position in the Lord is important. Sure, T tell us how, how you find your position, how, uh, the different ones about di uh, different things that you have found that the Lord has shown you in your life, uh, what your position is. Well, as Brother Fred said, Mark 16 was what he gave me when I was nine years old. And my mother would um, take me to, we were in the, the Baptist denomination, and they had prayer meetings on uh, every uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, we would go to prayer, and she would take me with her. 
And as a, even as a small child, I enjoyed going to the prayer meetings. And I realized then that I was a prayer warrior, that I, that I loved to pray. And God had given me a desire to pray. And then uh, there was an organization, and I'm sure it's still uh, with the Baptist denomination where uh, it's called w, uh, WMU, uh, where they bring in missionaries. And, and so uh, they had meetings and my mother again would take me with her. And every time a missionary would come to speak to the group, I would sit there and cry. And I was still, I was just a young, young girl. And my mother would look over there and she would say, why are you crying? Why are you crying? And the reason I was crying is because the, the Lord was touching my heart that that's part of, of who you are. That's part of what you're going to be doing. You're going to be going around the world. You're going to be um, bringing the gospel uh, all over the world. And so, you know, those people are called missionaries. Well, what do Brother Fred and I do? We go all over the world. We, we raise up leaders all over the world. We teach schools all over the world. And then those leaders go forth. They go forth out of Cuba. They go forth out of Mexico. They go forth out of China. They go forth out of Indonesia. They go forth out of Vietnam. They go out of all of the countries, you know, to spread the word. And so that's, that's some of what um, happened to me of how I knew who I was. And then as a teenager, I began to know things. And I didn't ask about, I didn't ask to know these things, but I would know about a person's life. And then the Lord uh, spoke to me about uh, the, the prophecy uh, about prophesying. And, and I began to study in the Old Testament about Elijah and about Elisha and about uh, the, the pro Samuel, uh, the prophets. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was in, um, I guess it was middle school, about seventh or eighth grade, uh, we would have devotions in the school every morning over the loudspeaker. And so one morning, uh, the, the, the principal came and got me out of class and said, I want you to come and do the devotion today. And so what I did, I read out of 1 Samuel where Samuel was called uh, by God and he didn't know that it was God. Samuel, Samuel. And, and I began to uh, say that over the loudspeaker. And after I was finished, uh, the principal looked at me and she said, I think you're going to be a preacher. And